Chippewa Valley Community Television and the City of Eau Claire present the Eau Claire Redevelopment Authority meeting. The audio for this program can be heard on WRFP LP 101.9 FM. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And uh, the first order of business before we get to the minutes, we have a replacement for Mr. Nick. Yes. Uh, the elder. Nope. Nope. Okay. This is uh, Janessa from um, the city attorney's office in GCBCAM uh, for city as Okay, very good. Welcome. And you came to the right meeting with our uh, festive uh, Christmas uh, party that uh, is going on simultaneously. <laughs> okay, everybody had the minutes for the meeting of November 16th. Um, can I get a motion to approve? So Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, minutes are approved. Financial statements. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Um, so attached to the preliminary financial statements for the month ending November 30th, 2016, operating expenses for the month of November totaled $416 and included $15 for postage, $401 for utilities. Acquisition and capital expenses for the month should say should say uh, November there uh, totaled $6,577 and totaled uh, 4080 for phase two and environmental sampling. That's that's the work that AIRS is doing in the area. And then $2,497 for pre-demolition services. These are just invoices that we're still receiving for that, that pre-demolition work. Okay. With that, I'll take any questions. Questions? Hearing none, thank you very much. Can I get a, a motion to approve the financial statements as presented? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the financial statements as presented, say aye. 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 Both same sign. Financial statements have been approved. Item number four, presentation of Cannery District Health Impact Assessment. Michael? Yes. Um, as I mentioned to you at your last meeting, uh, Audrey asked to make a presentation on December to let you know where they are at and all the things that are going on. Mr. Klinkhammer is our representative on that committee, and there was a uh, one-page summary in your packet. I'll turn it over to Thanks, Mike. Good morning. Thanks again for allowing me to come and give an update. Um, when I realized it had been a little over a year since we'd been back to just talk about where we're at with the health impact assessment, we figured it was due time to do that. And like Mike mentioned, there's a one-page summary in your packet that really talks through some of the purpose um, the purpose, the ideas behind the health impact assessment and our status and where we're at and the things that we've been working on for the last year. Um, but just to give a little summary, so I was here in August of 2015 and at that time we just received a grant from the Medical College of Wisconsin to uh, pilot a health impact assessment, which is a tool among a few tools that we have to think about how some of the decisions we make as a city might impact the health of our residents. And in the health chapter that was adopted last year, the comp plan, uh, HIA or health impact assessment was one of the tools that was mentioned we should pilot. So that was sort of the impetus behind doing this. Uh, we focused on the cannery district when we started last year, mostly because of timing. The development in that area was obviously ramping up just as we'd gotten the grant and so it seemed like a good area to pilot this tool. So what we've been doing so far is we've got a couple of different groups working on this. We've got a project team that represents Mayo, um, the city planning office and also Eau Claire Healthy Communities as well as the health department. They work on sort of the daily tasks of the health impact assessment. We also have two advisory committees. Those groups are made up of community members, folks that live and work in the West Riverside neighborhood, as well as a few folks from city council, Mr. Klinkhammer, um, and uh, a few other folks that touch on some of, the, some of the decisions that are made regarding community development here in the city. So those groups have been meeting about every six to eight weeks over the last um, eight or nine months or so, and have been touching on uh, the health impact assessment as we've been making progress. So earlier this year, we started with about 20 different topics that we could focus on for health impact assessment, anything from mental health, transportation, safety, housing, workforce development, um, parks, trails. We sort of had a universe of topics that we could focus on. Of course, we can't do everything, so we had to narrow it down and we took our two advisory committees through a prioritization process and then those groups decided what our five focus areas would be um, to look at potential positive and negative health impacts from uh, development in the cannery district. So the five areas that we're focusing on right now are parks and trails, 
social cohesion. This is at the top of page two of that handout. Uh, safety and crime, transportation and access. So how do people get in and around the new development and the neighborhood adjacent to it? And also housing. So those are the areas that we are focusing on. And when I say focus on right now, we're looking up, uh, we're looking at other research, we're looking at other communities, best practices and examples for other communities for how related to those five areas we can really optimize this development. How can we see the most benefits, the most positive health impacts, and uh, minimize any potential negative health impacts out of the development? So we're looking up those best practices now. Uh, we'll be reconvening both advisory committees uh, within the first quarter of next year to uh, look at recommendations that we'd like to put forward. And really, ju they're just recommendations. So there's nothing enforceable that comes out of a health impact assessment. It's not like an environmental impact assessment in that way. Um, but it'll be recommendations for tweaks um, or suggestions for how to really optimize the new development and uh, connection to the neighborhood adjacent to it as well. And really, I just want to emphasize that this is a pilot. This is the first time we've done something like this for the city of Eau Claire. Um, we're really excited about it, but we're also learning how to optimize our own process along the way. Um, but it's a tool we'd like to use. Um, thinking about the city as a whole and development as we move forward as a community, as we grow as a community, and think about being a sustainable community, um, including health and the health of our residents and really optimizing how we grow as a city is something we like to continue to do further. So with that, I'll take any questions. Questions? Dave, you want to give your opinion of serving on this uh, group? <laughs> I'll be happy to. Uh, Ms. Bonner has uh, done an excellent job, uh, and uh, after missing the meeting where I was appointed to this lofty <laughs> position, I uh, uh, became rather enthusiastic about it. it uh, so many of the decisions that uh, the RDA makes and the city makes in terms of development and redevelopment uh, have evolved over years, and I think this is another method that is going to be uh, helpful in refining those decisions so that uh, uh, the built environment is, uh, is has a positive impact on the, the not only the people that live in that particular neighborhood but in the community and the region as well. Okay, any further questions? When will you be back to uh, give us another presentation? We would like to be back with a final report or very close to final report by the middle of next year. So hopefully late spring, early summer, um, but kind of depends on, on um, our advisory committees and some, sometimes they give us a little extra direction that takes a little extra time. Okay, very good. Yeah. Thank you. We look yeah. forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Next item is the presentation of the Cannery District 3D model for marketing purposes. Michael? Yes, as uh, we've been going through this process now for uh, quite some time, uh, Mr. Bruce King is here from the Realtors Association that uh, funded this uh, second phase of the redevelopment, so we thank him. Um, and uh, Phil and Chris are here uh, to bring everything together on all the presentations that they've made to you in the past and uh, bringing this final product to you in a 3D fashion. So I'll turn it over to them now. Thank you. Um, the intent today is to kind of take you on a virtual tour of what the potentials are for the cannery district. Um, just so you know that I think from the onset that we were given clear direction from the RDA to come back with a tool that Mike can use in, in his effort to uh, market and uh, encourage the development of the cannery district. Uh, what we also did is that we wanted to present this in a way that sets um, the tone for the discussion and not so much the direction for the development. And so as you'll see this as we work through uh, some of the imagery is that um, these are placeholders that are just um, identifying uh, structures and mass, kind of a building massing study if you want to call it that. Um, but I'll take you through some of the preliminary work that we had done. Uh, and had discussed. That will give a little uh, reference and frame the discussion. Um, we had started out with an um, initial 
uh, evaluation of what the sites are and, and, and had a, a good uh, community meeting with the potentially interested individuals or groups that was held at the Lazy Monk, uh, well attended. Uh, we looked at imagery like this and we also went further and we studied what the um, areas were and what proportions go to what and what uh, identifies which development area. And this is a broad scheme uh, image of what uh, some of the plan graphics that we used. We've taken that back now and, and with the help of Chris Seleski, who is our uh, skilled uh, animator, uh, we came up with uh, in, in some images that I'll be sharing with you about what the potential of this site will, will be. Uh, we also have an animation embedded in this that will show you um, as, it, as it flies over and, and shows that the whole context of what the development could be. But again, we're showing placeholders on this plan with um, the items for uh, um, existing buildings such as Quick Trip, uh, the Children's Theater, and the potential uh, brewing project or whatever the redevelopment is in this area, uh, and some of the masses of buildings that could be placed in that and its relationship to, uh, to each other and to parking and others. Um, from a couple different vantage points, you can see how it kind of changes the scale of the space and how you can uh, now envision some of this stuff. And Mike can take this to potential um, developers to, to help uh, kind of guide some of the discussion. Uh, we looked at the area from Platte to Maple Street as well and, and how the character of that space changed from uh, an open area about nine and a half acres with an, uh, with an adjacent uh, potentially, uh, potential redevelopment area. Um, and building some of the massing that goes into that, that kind of enunciates some of the parking strategies, um, some connectivity to the neighborhood through a, a, a grand promenade, um, the, the, the road that passes through these, this development and kind of separates it from the uh, park and the park use areas. Um, but it gives you a bit of a scale of what that space is and also a, a potential massing. Um, you know, to, to set the tone for the heights of the buildings and such. Um, we have, um, what I've just showed you uh, is just kind of some snippets of images that we took out of there, but um, when you put this in animation, it kind of brings it to life. If you could imagine looking at this with a two-dimensional plan, you wouldn't get the same uh, depth of understanding. I think that's what really is the beauty and the gift that, that Mike is going to be able to take forward to people who can also see the vision pretty clearly. Uh, it helps to um, narrow the discussion and decision-making process, and um, you know, it, it brings life to the, to the space. Um, we took that model all the way up to the high bridge, and we'll talk a bit about those, those areas as well. Um, just kind of to set the tone of, of where we're going on this presentation. We also looked at the development areas um, that were or are presently Kessler and what I know it as Kessler Bowl. Not a lot of people know it as Kessler Bowl anymore. Um, but how that was thought to be an integral part of this redevelopment. Um, we had two lots there, uh, two acres, or a little bit short of two acres. Um, and so the feedback that we got was that this needs to be some kind of high density housing, uh, but not so much apartment buildings. And so we came up with the idea of a townhome arrangement or adjoined um, patio homes, or however you want to call that, that um, fills the area using a, a different strategy for um, redevelopment in that area um, could be very nice and complementary uh, to the park and the park can complement this as well. Um, so the south side which is the Kessler Park side is this grouping of buildings and massing of buildings that we uh, envision for it. Uh, the area uh, to the north which is uh, just closer to the high bridge uh, has a, a similar look obviously uh, because the direction we are given is that those two should function essentially the same. Don't change the character of those two areas. We also are looking at what's called Cannery Park uh, which is really that space that goes from um, Maple Street to the north 
Uh, there is some areas, uh, let's say from uh, between uh, just south of Maple Street, um, that has also some some group areas in it, and we'll we'll share a little bit about what that imagery is. So this is this imagery is coming from the north by the high bridge, and coming down this uh, the serpentine or this this walkway that connects from the high bridge to the park area. We've had in the discussion a, 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 a skateboard area. Um, again, these are placeholders in the plan. What happens in there, uh, you know, will ultimately be the discussion with the Parks um, Beautification Committee. Uh, overlooks very important to this site, very important to this site. Um, open space and open, quality open space is what we, uh, we're emphasizing in here. Usable space, mixed use buildings, mixed use fields, um, trails that hugs the side of the bank, um, but it also uh, connects into the other uses of the park. In some ways, this is not that dissimilar than own park in the way that it functions in the community. Uh, the facilities that are there are considerably different. Um, the uh, elements in there, as I mentioned, there's a number of overlooks in here that um, gives people great access and it, the character of the site just lends itself to that so well. Um, a mixed use or a multi-use field, which is um, probably one of the bigger recreational uh, advantages for the neighborhood to have that flexibility in there. Um, a neighborhood playground, if I could spell it right, um, that would be uh, part of this. Uh, we've obviously taken the, um, taken the, uh, used the advantage of showing cube courts there, um, just because this is the cube capital of the U.S. But again, it has mixed use, uh, or multi-use field opportunities in here uh, with a shelter that has the restrooms and a playground associated with and there's a basketball court associated and, and off-street parking. Um, on the south side of the park, we have a, a different dynamic that happens, which is more group-based. Uh, this was part of the discussion we had with Waterways and Parks and with this group earlier. Uh, that kind of shows how the community can engage with the space. And the beauty of this is that it's associated with the high density housing. Um, we also have an area in here that uh, has some performance capability, something that has uh, winter use. We're looking at some sledding opportunities in here. And how it integrates in with the banks and the topography of the site, and then uh, comes up and then marries into the, the neighborhood play area that we've shown here as well. So if you want to have any voiceover on this, we'll talk to James Earl Jones and see if we can <laughs> get him on our contract. Um, but again, it kind of shows the, the ability to engage the community in here. and that, So it's not a neighborhood park. It's not a community park. It's just a park. It's a park that the community and the neighborhood can use. Um, we're showing in here a large structure. And the structure is intended to be the uh, uh, potential uh, partnership between um, a group and the city to develop uh, what could be a curling facility there or uh, whatever, but that was that one uh, small parcel of land that was adjacent uh, or just north of Maple Street that would be um, developed in there. Um, as you look north, you can see a performance area, but um, and I can't really show it with a with a pointer, but that there's a bank along that line that gives some nice, you know, easy sledding opportunities. Um, and we've got uh, some areas on the bottom that we'll call the chill zone where, where people can uh, come and have fires and such during the winter time. Um, again, the private public building that would be there and the access to that, the parking accommodation made to it, the adjoining uh, uh, trail system. Um, we put in this fitness and yoga group area, uh, which is a, a blend of the, the equipment things and then some open space. And what we envision is to have that kind of a program space that would be, um, you know, have some audio capability and, and such that um, people could, could use that for group activities. Um, 
So that kind of gives you the overview of the, the project and some of the animations that we prepared for this. Um, I'll be continuing to do a summary report of what things we've uh, discussed and um, how, what brought us to this point. Um, but I think the main thing is then to work directly with Mike to make sure he's got the tools to aid in his discussions with the developers. But I wanted to step back a little bit and, and talk about um, what, what the objective was. And, and uh, you know, this is funded through a grant from the, from the realtors. And uh, part of the goals of that was to, um, uh, to, to look at taking advantage of compact building design. And I think the use of compact buildings in the north area is, uh, is evident of, of meeting that goal. Create a range of housing opportunities. Um, I think that kind of plays in well with the neighborhood. It doesn't um, kind of gentrify it so much as, as adds value to it. Creating a walkable neighborhood, um, another very, um, very important aspect to the, uh, to the project. Um, Foster distinctive and attractive communities with a strong sense of place. I think that's going to be an anchor to the west side. Um, preserve the open space. Um, we, you know, through the use, cities setting a side of the property to the north. Uh, I think that's very um, prudent use of open space. Um, to strengthen and direct development towards the existing community. Uh, again, creating that trail connection is huge. Uh, and makes that connectivity. Um, looking at transportation choices that will probably come later as their streets and, and roads get redeveloped. Um, uh, looking at a cost-effective development, um, encourage and um, the community and stakeholder collaboration in the development of it. So I think from the objectives of the proposal and, and what the realtors wanted in their grant, um, we, I think, met that with this um, kind of a complete package for the cannery district. So with that, uh, we'll move back to whatever questions you have. Qu questions from the board? I don't have a question. I, I just want to say thanks to Phil, Bruce, everybody involved. It's a great, great job on you know, where we started, where we are now. It's awesome. I love the animation. It looks great. So thank you. Thank you. Bruce, thanks to the realtors. I appreciate your support of this. Uh, Phil, you know, I, I know we, uh, this has been a long, long road. I'm sure we pushed you to the points of distraction at times, but boy, you, you delivered, and it's, it's, it's gorgeous. I, I think you solved some difficult problems very artfully. Uh, specifically how you've uh, lowered some of the density as you moved into the neighborhoods from the first plan and how you've really, I think, blended the idea of a neighborhood park and a larger community park into a space that, that's really nice. And I think the multifamily is probably much more achievable the way you've laid it out. So, so in, in every kind of hot button, I think you tick the boxes. Um, the other thing I like about it, if, if you step back, for all of us, and it's hard to articulate. Clearly, putting this back on the tax roll is important. You know, we live in an era for the city of Eau Claire of levy limits, and, and getting this onto the tax roll has a, a financial imperative. But if that's all this is, it doesn't really distinguish why the redevelopment authority or the city is offering any financial assistance to do this distinct from anywhere else in the community. If all it is is tax dollars, uh, I think we ultimately run the risk of not being able to show why we're, we're spending it here. The answer to that question, I think, has to be public benefit. It has to be. It has to be able to point to something in this design where the public uniquely benefits. You know, I manage lots of apartments for lots of different owners. I've never yet had a complaint about Phoenix Park. Why? Because you see a unique public benefit that when we develop in a greenfield is not present. It's easy to see why the city would incentivize it. This is easy to see why the city and the RDA should be involved to incentivize it. And without answering that question, I think you find support for taxpayers and other people rapidly erodes. 
So I think it was critical. I'm glad you kept at it. And Bruce, hopefully you can tell your folks the same, that, that what you are helping us walk toward is something that uniquely benefits the city in a way that other development won't. So, well done. Thanks. Any other uh, comments? Dale? Yeah, I would just echo the appreciation to Bruce and the realtors for um, uh, funding this and Phil for your work on it. Uh, it has been a long journey and, and appreciate the, it, um, you know, the final efforts here. Also, just for the, uh, for the members of the RDA, um, to let you know that we have formed a staff team uh, that is regularly looking at this particular project um, and we are putting in, in, in place uh, phased approaches for how we want to take care of the infrastructure on this. So in terms of the park space, the trails, traffic, utilities, um, we're, we're putting together um, plans for how we can phase our way into this because this uh, obviously this just doesn't happen overnight and we don't do it all at once um, and the money is not there to do all at, at once so we're taking a look at uh, you know based on these broad concepts uh, what needs to be done first from an infrastructure perspective and be laying that out and you'll and we'll be coming back to you at some point with some of those ideas and plans and of course that'll be a, a coordinated effort between the city and um, and and your your work uh, here at the RDA so thank you further comments okay Michael any comments from you you're the guy that's going to have to bring this out and sell it because we need the valuations to uh, to fund all the great things that uh, Phil just showed us yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased to uh, have this tool now. Um, at, once we start working on the, the, the bike trail and such, as Dale mentioned, uh, people will see that activity. They'll know that this is imminent, and it'll be a good time to be able to start talking to the developers as our work is starting on the city level to show them that how, those, uh, how the amenities that developers like to see to attract them to an area will be there. So I'm um, very happy. Thank you, Phil. Oh, good. Okay, thank you very, very All much. Right. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I guess as long as we're uh, fortunate enough to have uh, Ms. Boner here, uh, after the work that uh, her task force has put into it, I would, I would only like to ask her, based on this presentation, if there's anything that jumps out at her based on what we have been working on for the past year. Thanks for the opportunity, Dave. Um, <clears throat> I've been pleased to have Phil on one of our advisory committees, actually. So it's sort of been an iterative process as we've been looking at the health impact assessment. Phil's been also sharing with our committee how some of these plans have been evolving. Though this is the first time I've seen the flyover, obviously. and. Um, one of our focus areas is social cohesion, and that's something that a lot of our, both advisory committees have really latched onto as something that's different that we haven't tried to focus on before as we've done community development. And actually what strikes me is that this has a lot of elements that promote social cohesion, especially within the park, the connection between the park and the development, um, the small setbacks from the street. Those are all elements that our uh, research has shown to promote social cohesion. So I think that that's really an area that, that this, uh, new development will really be able to promote within the community. Yeah. Thanks very much. And it shows that we got the right guy on the committee, Dave. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank okay. You thanks, much. Phil. Uh, item number six, executive director's report. Michael? Yeah, just a couple of things. So uh, we continue to um, uh, get the background information that we need for 1807 Oxford Avenue. Uh, environmental report and we are uh, going out for bids to see uh, what the cost might be for that. Um, and then also on the um, Block 7 uh, proposal that uh, Mr. Schaefer presented to us, uh, there was a meeting held this past week uh, and they all uh, brought some potential vendors together. Uh, Mr. Schaefer was at that meeting too to see what kind of interest there might be for the, the bottom floor of that proposal. So uh, both of those two, two things are, are moving forward and uh, uh, we'll be back to you uh, at a later date. Okay, very good. Uh, number seven, announcements, directions, or correspondence. Dale? Just one thing to add that weather cooperating, um, the ice skating rink will be open here in the next uh, few days to a week and the liner building, so. 
Any uh, correspondence, fan mail from anybody? Or No, we have not received any. Okay. okay. Uh, all right, then uh, our next meeting will be January 18th. If there's uh, no uh, no further uh, questions or concerns, we'll stand adjourned and Merry Christmas. This was a rebroadcast of the Eau Claire Redevelopment Authority meeting, presented by Chippewa Valley Community Television and the City of Eau Claire. Chippewa Valley Community Television is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, you can contact us by calling 715-839-5067 or on the web at www.cbctv.org.